Imagine that you're at the helm of a budding game theory enterprise. With the ad revenue, book sales, and consulting fees, it turns out that there's a lot of money in this. A lot of money in this. A million dollars of money in this. Unfortunately though, you're not alone. You know that a potential rival is out there watching what you're doing and waiting in the wings. And one day in the future, they're going to start trying to take over this enterprise. It's up to you to figure out how to best defend your turf. Here's how it works. You begin by choosing a level of effort to exert. Think of this as producing videos, writing blog posts, going on as a guest on podcasts, engaging in social media, and so forth. Your rival will see all of that effort that you've exerted and then choose to invest a level of effort themselves. Unfortunately for both of you, exerting effort is expensive. For you, each unit of effort that you invest will cost $9. But there is some good news for you here. In contrast, each unit of effort that your rival exerts will cost them $16. This difference might arise because you've already spent a lot of time watching videos on game theory, so it's relatively easy for you to produce content, and thus your opportunity cost for each unit of effort is lower. After you've each exerted that effort, we will see who becomes the game theory superstar. In particular, the probability that you win is your effort divided by total effort. That is, how much you work divided by how much you work plus how much your rival works. Similarly, the probability that your rival becomes the superstar is how much they work divided by total work. And you really do want to win here because the winner secures all $1 million. Although, as a side note, if we just divided that million dollars according to the proportion of effort each person put in, the solution to this game would be identical. Here is the puzzle. Suppose you only want to maximize the net expected profit. That is, how much of that million dollars you expect to receive minus your total costs of effort. Your opponent has the same preferences. If that's the case, what is the optimal level of effort you should exert in this interaction? As a bit of forewarning, this is probably the most difficult puzzle I've covered so far. As such, you have two options here. First, you could pause and try to derive what the proper solution is to this game. Second, you could pause for just a moment, consider the incentives that you see on the screen right now, and then in the comments section below, write down what your best educated guess would be for the optimal number of units of effort that you should exert. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. This puzzle actually comes out of chapter six of Militant Competition, which is less puzzly and more of a serious research book. But if you're watching this video on the day of the release, that corresponds to the release of that book as well. Very exciting stuff. As a further hint, you need to apply backward induction to this problem. That's a topic I cover in chapter two of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. This game is better known as a sequential Tulloch contest. I've covered simultaneous Tulloch contests before, and in fact, in a previous puzzle, we've seen how to derive the optimal raffle strategy. This is essentially a raffle, except the key difference here is that your opponent is acting strategically, and thus you must factor that in when you are choosing what your optimal level of effort is.
Are you ready for the solution? As I offered as a hint, the key to this game is backward induction. Think about this from your rival's standpoint. The rival can reason that they know the effort that you have chosen. And thus, they can choose an effort that optimizes their payoff, given what your effort is. In turn, the first step towards solving this problem is to write down what your rival's payoff function looks like. And, well, it's this. A million dollars, denoted M, is the prize. And they gain that with the probability E2 divided by E1 plus E2. That's their effort level divided by the total level of effort. Then they subtract out 16 times the total number of units of effort that they themselves have input. To help visualize this, think about the following graph. On the horizontal axis, we have your opponent's effort level. On the vertical axis, we have your opponent's payoff. When your opponent exerts no effort, they get nothing. As they increase their effort a little bit, they'll start making more and more money in expectation. But at some point, that's going to level off. And if they exert tons and tons of effort, eventually their payoff will become negative. Perhaps surprisingly, this graph is helpful for deriving your opponent's optimal effort. They want to choose whatever effort level maximizes the function. You'll notice that if you draw a tangent line across the graph where the function is maximized, that tangent line is flat. Thus, if you know a little bit about derivatives, you can figure out what the effort level is that maximizes the function. You simply need to take the derivative of that function with respect to the rival's effort and set it equal to zero. Where that derivative is equal to zero is where the tangent line is zero, and thus is the effort level associated with the best payoff for the rival. If we do a little bit of math, we can rearrange the derivative to look like this. This is where things go a little off the rails and why this problem is difficult to solve. We want to know what value of E2 makes this equation true. But you'll notice that this is a quadratic equation, and thus you need the quadratic formula to solve it. Well, if you use the quadratic formula, the root that you get as the solution to this is 250 times the square root of your effort minus your effort. All this is saying is that your opponent sees the effort that you have produced and then will choose their effort based on that, according to the function that you see there. One slight caveat here is that if you were to produce tons and tons of effort, this value would actually be negative, and under that circumstance, your opponent would just choose zero effort instead. Now that we've done that, we can solve for your optimal effort. Your payoff function looks like this. You win a million dollars with probability E1 divided by E1 plus E2. And then you pay nine times E1 in terms of effort. It turns out that this optimization problem is easier to work through than the previous one. That's because you implicitly control the amount of effort your opponent produces. Remember, their optimal effort level is 250 times the square root of your effort minus your effort. Consequently, we can just substitute E2 star into your payoff function. And if we do a little bit of simplifying, that works out to be just 4,000 times the square root of your effort minus nine times your effort. To visualize what that looks like, again, we have an effort level on the horizontal axis and a payoff on the vertical axis. We see a similar sort of relationship. 
where if you produce no effort, you get nothing. If you produce some effort, you start getting something. But if you produce too much effort, eventually your payoff will go negative. Like before, you want to choose the effort level associated with the maximum of the function. And if you draw a tangent line at where the maximum of the function is, you see that it is flat. Thus, we just need to take another derivative, this time with respect to your effort level, and set it equal to zero. When we do that, and we solve for your effort level, we get 4 million divided by 81. That works out to being about 49,383. And it'll be interesting for me to see how close your guesses were to that number. And if you want a few more details on what happens when you guys play this out, you will win 8 ninths of the time. Your expected payoff, that is how much money you're getting minus your costs, will be 4 ninths of a million, or $444,000. $444.44. In contrast, your opponent is going to do much worse, only making about $12,345.68. The reason for your advantage is twofold. First, and more obviously, is the fact that you have a lower marginal cost, which means that you can exert a lot more effort than your opponent. Second, and more subtly, is that you're going first. There's a theorem for this type of game that says you would always prefer to go first than second. You can sort of dictate the terms of this game, because as you recall, the amount of effort that you exert actually implicitly determines the amount of effort your opponent exerts. And you can exploit that to your advantage as well. Did your answer come close to this? Let me know about your thought process in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.